Yes, they are, but they have not been playing well lately. They've been struggling offensively, just th shooting 37% in their last few ball games. This is a chance for them to get their offense back on track. Sam Croft of Greensboro, North Carolina. David Libby of San Diego, California. Murph Shapiro of Rochester, New York. The officials working this one. Nover and Johnson jump center. It's controlled by EIU, dressed in the blue uniforms. As always, opens in man to man. And I think they'll be a lot more aggressive than they normally would, thinking they have a distinct advantage over Eastern Illinois. This is Kevin Martin, guarded by Cheney. Olsen, watched by Damon Bailey. Steve Rowe, the leading scorer for the Panthers of Eastern Illinois. Drives around Nover. Nover got a hand on the shot. And it came down to the hands of Chris Reynolds. He's the point guard, a junior from Peoria, Illinois. Allen Henderson showing excellent range as he knocked down the 16-foot jumper for two. One thing you want to do when your offense is struggling is encourage your players to shoot freely, not look for wide-open plays. Just get the game going quickly. Lots of opportunities for yourself. Eastern Illinois comes into this one at 17 and 13. They are the champions of the Mid-Continent Conference Tournament. Olsen, an excellent outside shooter. His first try and a foul on the rebound. Nover called for shoving away Curtis Lieb. Olsen's been very hot from perimeter. He was 13 for 21 in the conference tournament, which they won. Surprisingly, they were a low seed in that mid-continent tournament. They tied the fourth in the regular season. They missed by Barry Johnson on the rebound, cleared by Henderson. On the move, the Hoosiers. Damon Bailey fouled as he put up the shot. Indiana, meanwhile, comes in at 23 and 6, but they struggled through the last four games of the regular season. Bobby Knight particularly upset about the regular season finale. A loss at Purdue. Problem over the last four games shooting. One of those really struggling, Damon Bailey, nine for 29 from the floor over the last four. Talking to Indiana before the game, they said everybody's healthy. First couple of plays, Damon Bailey looks like he's really struggling. Left leg dropped almost from top to bottom. One out of two for Bailey. It's 3-0 Indiana. This is the first meeting ever between Indiana and Eastern Illinois. Olson, the senior from Newark, Illinois. All five starters for Eastern Illinois are from the state of Illinois. Martin's three short, rebounded by Rowe. Olson tries the three. That barely scored on the rim, and Johnson couldn't save it. And that's a bad omen for Dave Olson, as the EIU people tell us. If he doesn't hit his first one or two outside shots, he generally has a struggling kind of night. Whistle away from the ball, the foul on Steve Rowe of Eastern Illinois. One thing, though, good for Eastern Illinois as they get started here, they don't look to be hesitating. They look to be attacking the basket. They'll find the range once they get warmed up. Big factor for them not to be in awe of the impressive Indiana Hoosiers. Just had a look at Rick Samuels, the head coach of the Eastern Illinois Panthers. His Panthers 0 for 5 from the field at this point. 3 0 Indiana. We've played just more than two minutes here in Boise, Idaho. Henderson. Count the bucket, and he was followed by Curtis Lee. Alan Henderson will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Henderson with a strong move inside. Just a freshman. If Indiana can hold on and win this game, and there's lots of time to go, we're just underway. He will be a huge factor in their next round opponent, the LSU Tigers with Shaquille O'Neal. Hoosiers pitching a shutout, 6-0. Rowe guarded 
by Reynolds. Reynolds, an excellent defender. Martin looking to lob it in the lead. Newby bounced around by Matt Nover. Martin kicked it out to Rowe. He looked down to make sure he was behind the line. They're still 0 for the game. Are the Panthers from the floor now 0 for 6? As in every game so far today in Boise, defense has been the key. Nova's shot was short. Johnson controls. He's a senior from Normal, Illinois. Four seniors and a sophomore leave the sophomore in the starting lineup for Eastern Illinois. Rowe juggled the pass. The pass was a bit firm from Curtis Lee. When you're playing the post like Lieb was that time, and the guy cuts off on the collapsing defense, hold the ball underhand and just flip it out there to him so he can grab it himself and make the play. Panthers in the NCAA tournament for the first time, and they look more than a little bit tight here in the opening three minutes plus. Anderson powers along the baseline. The official really hasn't given a definitive signal here. He's walked all the way over to the press table without a signal. Now he, I still don't understand what he's doing, Bill. Looks to me like he called an offensive foul, and his confusion was whether to allow the basket. Well, what they've said, and this is the reason we didn't understand the signal, it was an inadvertent whistle. There's also a couple of inadvertent signals. So they count the basket, and it's 8 0 Indiana. Anderson is seven of the eight. Proves your points. Foul on the follow-up activity. And it's against Eastern Illinois. The fouls on Steve Rowe. His second, the team's fourth. 16-23 to play in the first half. There are two kinds of cars. IU locker room before the game doesn't come from coach Rick Samuels. It actually comes from senior forward Rod McKinnis. He suffered a career-ending knee injury in December, and since then he's been the spiritual leader for the team. He dresses for every game, he attends every practice, and he always gives a motivational speech before the game. Tonight he said he didn't have to say much of anything because the team was so fired up. But as you look at the scoreboard, they might have been a little too fired up and maybe a little over-anxious, Sean. You're right, Andrew. He may want to try a different approach. Perhaps he'll get another shot at halftime. 10-0 Indiana. This is the eighth possession for Eastern Illinois without a point. Henderson called for a charge as he ran over a new man into the game for the Panthers, Eric West, number 34. Allen Henderson in transition. Got to give up that ball. Don't take it to the to the hoop when the man is just standing there. Move laterally or pass back to someone else who's charging the hoop. Here's Rod McKinnis. When he went down with the injury, the Panthers were 5-0. and all, But they lost 10 of their next 14 games. But they come into this one and they won 8 of 11. And they're on the board. The first points ever in the NCAA Division I tournament for Eastern Illinois come from Curtis League, number 54. And when Eastern Illinois started in a man-to-man -man defense, three-second violation there, which will give the ball back to Eastern Illinois. But now they've dropped it off into a zone defense, going to test Indiana's outside shooting, which has been suspect. Matt Nover was the man guilty of the three-second violation. We've played five minutes. Indiana leads 10-2. It's West. He's called for an offensive foul. His first. The fifth against the Panthers. West, a junior from St. Louis. He played his best basketball of late, particularly near the Mid-Continent Conference Tournament. In the three games there, he averaged 11 points. In season, he averages under three points per game. Nover. Alex Henderson got a hand on it to keep it alive. Nover scores. His first points of the night. 
The lob that time, attempting to get it to Anderson, as we saw in the previous game with O'Neal. They've got to throw that ball up in the air, high at the top corner of the white square on the backboard. Johnson, and a foul call. For those of you just joining us, welcome to Boise, site of first round action in the West region. It's been all Indiana through the first five minutes and 38 seconds. The Hoosiers dressed in white, leading 12 to two. Sean McDonough with Bill Walton. Here come the Hoosiers again. Chris Reynolds with his first points of the night, and it's 14 to two. Eastern Illinois just hasn't been able to do anything to bring the people who are just joining us up to date. It's as simple as that. They've been totally out of sync. The Indiana defense has just been very aggressive, overplaying all the passing lanes. Eastern Illinois looks out of sync, intimidated almost by the tremendous reputation of the Indiana Hoosiers. West's shot well short. Indiana six for seven from the floor. That's 86 percent. And they'll improve on that as Calvert Cheney knocks one in from the baseline. By contrast, Eastern Illinois is one of nine from the floor, 11 percent. To add them together, it's almost 100%. <laughs> That's right. It's now 88% shooting for Indiana, 7 of 8. 11% for Eastern Illinois, 1 of 9. Count the basket there for Barry Johnson. And he'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. The foul was on Calvert Cheney, his second, and the team's fourth. Number 20, Greg Graham, will line up four. Indiana. Greg Graham replaces Cheney. Barry Johnson at the line. The Panthers yeah, shooting. Yeah. And then Barry Johnson is at the line. Second leading scorer for the Panthers at 14 per game. It's 16 to 5, Indiana. <laughs> Reynolds on the floor now with Graham, Bailey, Nover, and Henderson. Looking for the five count. Instead, he drew a foul. Back in a man-to-man -man defense that time. Bailey a little out of sync. He's really a key for Indiana's offense to keep the floor spread. He scores well when he's playing well. That time, he ran up on the man with the ball. Kevin Martin picked up his second, the team's sixth. So the next foul against EIU in Indiana will shoot one and one. Damon Bailey, rebound by Lewis Jordan, a freshman number 23, who's come on for the Panthers. This is Martin with the ball. He's on the floor with Johnson lead. Jordan and West, the rebound by Henderson. Three rebounds for Allen Henderson. Bailey weaving through the traffic. Reynolds for three. Followed by Graham for two. Eastern Illinois was so intent on blocking out the big men for Indiana, Henderson and Nover, it allowed the smaller players to just slice in and get the wide open, uncontested offensive stick back. Jordan scores and a blocking foul called against Chris Reynolds. His first foul. More substitutions by Bobby Knight. Eric Anderson, ordinarily a starter, has checked in, along with Jamal Meeks. In even-numbered years, the last three even-numbered years, Indiana has lost in the first round. The last time they played a mid-continent team was in 1986 against Cleveland State. They lost to Kevin Mackey's Vikings up at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. But in the last three even-numbered years, Indiana has been in the East region. Here they're in the West. That's Damon Bailey for two. We talked about the loss to Cleveland State. They've also lost to Richmond and Cal Berkeley, mm -hmm. of all teams. Although Lou Campanelli's really got that program in Berkeley back on track with Jason Kidd, the number one high school recruit, coming into Berkeley next year. Cal beat Indiana in the first round of 1990 in Hartford. Richmond beat them in Hartford in 1988. As you saw in the graphic, Cleveland State beat the Hoosiers in 86 at Syracuse. Eric 
Barry Johnson shoots over Anderson and scores. Five points for Barry Johnson. He's the ninth leading scorer all time at Eastern Illinois. The greatest player in the history of the Panther program, Kevin Duckworth, the all-star of the Portland Trailblazers. No luck for Henderson as his shot rattled up. Speaking of Kevin Duckworth, he is the school's all-time leader in rebounding and block shots, but while he was there, he was not really their best player. As he moved on into the pros, he became a great player. While he was there, John Collins was their top player. Greg Graham lays it in for the easy two, and it's been easy throughout for the Hoosiers. They lead by 12. We played nine minutes. Jordan with the ball. He dislocated the small finger on his left hand. Johnson blocked the EIU bench. Thought that Anderson might have been guilty of goaltending. Graham. That's a three. Seven points off the bench for Greg Graham, the junior from Indianapolis. The lead is 15. Talked about Indiana's problems offensively. I don't see any of that today. They're coming out playing beautiful basketball, free and easy, wide open, pulling up, hitting shots right off the break. Indiana came into this one, having been held under 70 points in each of the last four games. Foul called on Henderson as Johnson took the shot. The last time the Hoosiers were held under 70 points in four consecutive games was back in 1983. The Hoosiers shot below 37% in each of their last three games. They're shooting 73% from the floor at the moment. Leib and Jordan go to the bench. Rowe returns for the Panthers. The foul was on Damon Bailey. Excuse me, Bill. It was the first on Bailey and the sixth on the team. This man right here, Barry Johnson, needs to get hot offensively to get Eastern Illinois back in the game. He used to have a perimeter game when he started at Eastern Illinois, but they've convinced him, the coaching staff, Rick Samuels, to get down in the paint when you're back to the basket and pound it down their throat. Timeout midway through the first half, Indiana by 13. Idaho. Indiana jumped off to a 10 0 lead, and the Hoosiers continue to lead Eastern Illinois. The margin 13 at the midpoint of the first half. Eastern Illinois dressed in blue. John McDonough and Bill Walton happy to have you with us. The fourth game of the day here in Boise. The winner of this one meets LSU on Saturday. Three more for Damon Bailey. Six points for the sophomore from Heltonville, Indiana. Eastern Illinois continuing to change up their defense, trying to frustrate it. Man to man sometimes, 2 3 zone, that last time a 1 3 1. Indiana solving its shooting problems. 12 for 16 so far. Steve Rowe answered the Bailey bucket with his first points of the game. Jamal Meeks gave it to Greg Graham. They are the backcourt, Anderson, Bailey, and Nover, the front court for Indiana. Bailey thought about the three. Anderson had it blocked, but a foul called against Derek Kelly, number 45. He's a junior from Evansville, Indiana, who has just checked in for Rick Samuels. That's the seventh team foul against the Panthers. Chris Reynolds returns. Jamal Meeks heads to the bench. Surprisingly, Indiana has 16 fouls of their own. You'd think they could just back off and play some of, of these Indiana Eastern Illinois players straight up. Great screen that time, Jamal Meeks. Taking a very hard blow. Anderson makes the first free throw. Eric, the senior from Chicago, ordinarily a starter, but he came off the bench tonight for Coach Knight. 30 to 14, Indiana. 
One of the reasons they'll bring Anderson off the bench is that he's more of a contributor offensively than Nova is. With the team struggling, when they make substitutions, that can be effective for them. Dave Olson buries a three from the corner. His first points of the night. Earlier this year against Wright State, Dave Olson hit 10 three-pointers, including eight in the first half. He had 34 points in that game against Wright State. Off the scramble, it's Matt Nover with the ball for the Hoosiers. Bailey, long from three-point range, rebounded by Andre Rodriguez, number 41, a freshman from Oak Park, Illinois, who's come in for the Panthers. Rowe guarded by Glenn. Rowe tried the same maneuver that worked for him a moment ago, but was shut off. Olsen long from three-point land. Graham the rebound ahead of the pack, Bailey, but the pass was too long. Bailey open initially. The Hoosiers, though, just couldn't pick it up. By the time they did see him, it was too late. They should have held the ball back. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. Indiana leads by 13, the largest lead for the Hoosiers, 16. Olsen keeps firing. Six points on two three-pointers for Dave Olson. As a senior in high school at North High School in Illinois, he led the state in scoring at 36 points per game. And a three-second violation called again against Matt Dover. Second time he's been whistled for that infraction. 7.29 to play in the half. Eastern Illinois within 10. Final four in two weeks on CBS. Game between Indiana and Saturday here in Boise. Looks like the Panthers have started to settle down. They're getting over their jitters and they've stabilized them today. They were down 10 0 and 12 2. Since then, it's been an even ball game. They're just down 10 now. West lost it as he thought about a shot. Tracked down to the corner by Graham. Graham, Reynolds, Bailey, Anderson, and Henderson. The fivesome on the floor for the Hoosiers. And Chris Reynolds is called for an offensive foul. At the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. We talked about trends all day and the fact that in the first three games the defense was the key as it is in this game so far for Indiana trying to get them out of the break but also Indiana like the other teams once they got a good lead that now they've pulled back and got more conservative offensively I don't think that's a good strategy coach Samuel said yesterday the number one key for Eastern Illinois is to run their offense against Indiana's tenacious half-court man-to-man defense that has been his nightmare realized as they really have had problems in the half court set. Indiana, a tremendous man to man defensive team. If they hold on and win this game, will they try that man to man defense against O'Neill and the LSU Tigers? Indiana without a big man who can play in the low post. Well, I think they will. So I'm going to say four letter word to Bobby Knight. Steve Rowe goes to the line as the foul was picked up by Reynolds and he's the first player in this game in foul trouble that is the third for Chris and he'll have to take a seat replaced by Jamal Meeks the senior from Freeport Illinois Steve Rowe, at the line. Rowe coming off a great performance in the mid-continent conference tournament he was the MVP he had 22 in the championship game against Illinois Chicago we averaged 20 points per game in the three tournament games and of course the big win in the tournament was not necessarily the championship win it was in the semifinals when they beat the big favorite Wisconsin Green Bay the regular season champions of the Midcontinent and that loss cost Wisconsin Green Bay and coach Dick Bennett a spot in the NCAA tournament field despite their 25 wins they had an excellent season Wisconsin Green Bay but the injury a key injury really hurt them John Martinez going down with the knee unable to participate in the tournament 
Bailey. All alone for three. Greg Graham short off the hand of Alan Henderson and out of bounds. Wait a minute. Now the outside official might be attempting to overrule the call. And he did. Murph Shapiro said it went out of bounds off Eastern Illinois. I think that's a good situation where the referees can come in and communicate and admit the fact that, hey, we made a mistake. I didn't see it. The other guy had a much better view of it. Overruled the call. Those officials, like the teams, are here because they are judged to be the best. Henderson, score the bucket. Derek Kelly committed the foul. While we have a moment, let's uh, squeeze in a look now at some of the other action that's taking place. Uh, perhaps the most impressive team of the first day, UConn. The Huskies leading Nebraska in an 8-9 game. It's the 9-seed UConn by 24, Billy. Very impressed with Connecticut in every respect. And they look like the Connecticut team that built up a 16-1 record earlier on in the year, playing with a lot of confidence. Burrell playing extremely well. And, of course, they're getting a great game out of Smith. And I've, I'm impressed also with Danielle Marshall, the way that he's been playing so far. The whole team looks very good. And, of course, they don't have sellers even in the lineup in this game. Jim Nance and Billy Packer with you at the moment. That's UConn just using the clock in the dark uniforms. And uh, the Huskies now headed for a Saturday matchup against Ohio State. Well, how about Nebraska staying back in the zone when you're getting beat by this type of score? You get down 24 points, still playing back in the zone. I mean, you got to come out and try to take advantage and come back in this game. I mean, it's a one-and-done one and tournament. This is a UConn team that was 16-1 and one at one time on the season before a late-season collapse at one time ranked number five in the country. Now, meanwhile, over in Greensboro, Iowa and Texas, and 15 minutes on the clock and that one to go. And the Hawkeyes, Billy, the Hawkeyes uh, in the dark uniforms leading by eight. Texas had made a little run at them here in the second half. Well, Iowa, a very deep team, gets balanced scoring. Big Ten wise, this is a club Tom Davis, you know, he just doesn't lose in those opening rounds. He's got a great record, 10 and two in the first two rounds over the course of his career, doing it here again tonight. The winner of this game goes against the number one team in the nation on Saturday, the Duke Blue Devils. Could be a repeat from last year for Iowa, right? Iowa and Duke met last year, right, Billy, at uh, Minneapolis in the second, second round. round. Same round. Okay, that jumper good for Texas, a three to cut it to eight. So let's get you back now in the first half to Indiana and to Eastern Illinois. And here's Sean McDonough. Thank you, Jim and Billy. Here in Boise, while you're away, Damon Bailey converted a three-point play. And Indiana's lead is 14, the largest lead for the Hoosiers, 16. You're looking at Eric West. Indiana still torrid from the field, and Eastern Illinois is starting to pick it up. But they started out 0 for 7 from the floor. Allen Henderson at the line just scored his 11th point. 12 for Henderson to go along with four rebounds. That last lob play that Indiana ran for Henderson, with all the big men we've had all day today, that was the best executed lob we've had. Henderson over the top, held his position, released at the proper time, got the foul at the basket. Barry Johnson missed. Eric Anderson the rebound. Under five minutes to play in the half. Meeks off to Anderson. We played the sound bite from Coach Bobby Knight during the LSU BYU game. He did not sound particularly optimistic about his team's chances for success in the tournament, with the way they were playing down the stretch. But he has to be pleased with what he's seen through the first 16 minutes here in Boise. Things are going very well for Indiana right now. And they continue to go well as Bailey scores. But let's not forget, Sean, the game that we did last year. That was Coastal Carolina who made a big run at the Hoosiers. Foul line, but look at the defenders. One, two, three. And there's one more back here who collapsed too far. Collapsed too far. And Eric Anderson finishes the break strong. Off a scramble, Damon Bailey wound up with the ball. A 20-point lead for Indiana. Meeks 
The beautiful dish off to Anderson, and Eric now has six. And again, players behind the ball on the fast break are the ones who are open. Martin, guarded by Meeks. Lead, also on the floor for Eastern Illinois with Olsen, Johnson, and West. Johnson, deflected by Henderson, the rebound. Down to Eric Anderson, a 14-0 run over the last 220 for the Hoosiers. Anderson. Jump ball, the call. The arrow points to Indiana. The Hoosiers will keep it. Interesting in the last defensive series for Indiana, Allen Henderson with the block shot. Just a freshman. We've seen great shot blockers today in Mourning and O'Neill. Imagine the difference three years from now when Allen Henderson, Allen Henderson is a senior, what physical development he'll come up with over the next three years. Henderson scores again. He has 14 points here in the first half. Allen came into the game averaging under 11 points per game at 10.7. He is the all-time leading scorer in Indianapolis high school basketball history. 2,419 points in high school. That's the sixth highest total in Indiana state history. He missed the free throw, rebounded by Barry Johnson. 2.50 to play in the half. Indiana enjoying its largest lead, 24 points. Henderson, what a great half he's had as he had the steal. Anderson. Three more for Eric Anderson. Nine points and five rebounds off the bench for the senior from Chicago. That type of shooting by Indiana's big men will be very effective though against O'Neal in Saturday's game if Indiana holds on here because he'll be underneath the basket all game long. Basically, it was a two on nothing break. Rowe hustled back to knock the ball away from Graham. Rowe whistled for the foul. Today's action in the East in Greensboro, Duke, Missouri, and Seton Hall, the winners. Texas and Iowa in a tight battle at the moment in Greensboro. Bobby Knight going deep into his bench now. Anderson departs. Todd Lindemann, a freshman wearing number 50, has come in. And Todd Leary, number 30, is also in. Indiana only dresses 10 players. There's Lindemann, seven-foot freshman from Channing, Michigan. Nine points off the bench for Greg Graham. I find it highly unusual that in this day of big-time college basketball, Indiana still sticking with just ten players. Well, they have some red shirts this year. Pat Graham went out with an injury, suffered in the preseason. Players redshirting Bobby Knight's son, Pat Knight. Foul called on Lindemann as he gave Lieb a shove. First foul on Lindemann. Lindemann was the Michigan Class D Player of the Year last year. He finished third in the balloting for Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. In the Southeast today, Ohio State cruised to a win over Mississippi Valley State. Alabama won a tough one against Stanford, and North Carolina battled Miami wire to wire before prevailing. This is Todd Leary, sophomore from Indianapolis. He's a high school teammate of Eric Montross, who had a big day for North Carolina in the win over Miami of Ohio. Bailey. That's a three. The Hoosiers continue to pour it on. Damon Bailey out of his shooting slump. He's five for seven tonight and has 14 points. And it knocked away by Lindemann. With a minute 25 to play in the half, it's Indiana by 31. Jordan, Leary the man back. And that's a travel ball against Barry Johnson. Tough play that time by Eastern Illinois. Jordan coming down the lane, 
needs to slow up, spread the floor a little bit, create some opportunities and openings for Johnson, who by the time he even got the ball was too far underneath the basket to make a play with it. Henderson. Unselfishly to Bailey, he missed the short one from a tough angle. He was almost underneath the backboard. Under a minute to play in the half. It has been all Indiana from moment one. Leave with a nice turnaround one-hander. Five points for Curtis Leave. He did not start playing basketball until his senior year in high school. Lindemann. Nice move. Very smooth for Lindemann coming around as his body matures, as he develops, as we've seen Alonzo Mourning over the years. He'll be able to just power that ball up so much smoother, be able to deliver a strong dunk a couple years from now. Barry Johnson got it to drop in. Bobby Knight thought there was offensive interference, but the call is not forthcoming. At the buzzer, Bailey follows up the miss by Graham. That half-court shot almost went in. That would have been a fitting end to the half. A great half played by the Hoosiers. Goodyear, number one in tires. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. Halftime at the Boise State Pavilion. The final four games today in the West region. And Indiana leads by 29 at the half. Sean McDonough and Bill Walton, we watched a very impressive performance by the Hoosiers in the first half. And for the most part, it was not an impressive half for Eastern Illinois with the exception of a couple of moments. Eastern Illinois got off to a very slow start. They were down 10-0 and 12-2. Then for about the next six or seven minutes, they played fairly even, maintained that 10-point deficit. But as the half wore on, Indiana just opened it up offensively and now 29-point lead be very difficult to overcome for Eastern Illinois. The Hoosiers are certainly out of their shooting slump. Here's Andrea Joyce. Well, Sean, you talked about that shooting slump. Some of the players did decide to do something about it. They dug up tapes of games they shot well in in the past several days. They dug up those tapes, studied them, looking for some kind of subtle difference in the way they were shooting. Damon Bailey, for one, did find a mechanical difference. Didn't want to say specifically what it was, but he did find a difference in the way he was shooting, and apparently that's uh, part of the answer. At least he shot 63% in the first half year as opposed to 33% in all of March. Sean? Thank you, Andrea. We are underway in the second half. Eastern Illinois in the blue uniforms with the ball. This is Steve Rowe, the leading scorer coming in, had just four points in the first half. And the only scoring from the backcourt for Eastern Illinois came from Rowe. They were outscored in the backcourt 25 to 4 by Indiana. We talked about Rowe needing to have a big game at the outset of this game, but the Indiana defense rotates so well that any opportunity he's had has been sealed off. Let's take a look at some halftime statistics. Indiana at 68% for the half. Eastern Illinois started out 0 for 7 from the floor. Those are the numbers we mentioned a moment ago. 25 to 4 out of the backcourt. All four points from Rowe. 20 to 3, the advantage off the bench for Indiana. Five points now for Rowe. The foul was on Chris Reynolds, and that's his fourth. A non-issue at the moment with Indiana comfortably in front. This has really been a game of almost two to one for Indiana. We got twice as good field goal percentage, twice as many rebounds, and twice as many points as Eastern Illinois. Damon Bailey opens the half with Nover, Henderson, Reynolds, and Cheney. That's Matt Nover now with four points. 58-28. A 30-point lead, the largest for the Hoosiers, 31. This is Kevin Martin. Martin Morris is a backup over his first three years. Rowe missing from three-point land. Henderson lost it out of bounds. Eastern Illinois ball. Five count, they just did get it in. 
to row for two. Breakdown defensively by Indiana on the baseline out of bounds. That's why a lot of teams like to play zone defense on baseline out of bounds. Anderson followed his own miss. Hard to tell how that one didn't stay in. Kevin Martin, senior from Brookport, Illinois. That's just across the Ohio River from Paducah, Kentucky. And now Barry Johnson, guarded by Henderson. Lee, blocked by Nover, into the hands of Henderson. Lee needs to learn how to shoot that ball as a jump hook as opposed to a turnaround jumper, which will get blocked repeatedly, he being only about 6'5". Bailey's pass missed Nover. Eight turnovers committed by the Hoosiers. Bobby Knight has Indiana in the NCAA tournament for the 16th time in his 21 years as head coach. Indiana in pursuit of its fourth NCAA title under Coach Knight. They were the champions of this tournament in 1976, in 1981, and in 1987. In 81 and 87, Bob Knight's Hoosiers beat LSU and Dale Brown in both those tournaments on the way to the title. And barring a miracle in the second half here, they'll meet LSU on Saturday. Here's the tournament history for the Hoosiers. You mentioned the three championships under Knight, five in all for IU. Nover, the rebound of the lead miss. Fifty-eight thirty, Indiana, up by twenty-eight at seventeen thirty-seven to play in the second half. Albert Cheney, quiet night, but they haven't needed him. His pass struck an unsuspecting game in Bailey, and there's an easy two with authority for Barry Johnson. He has eleven. Cardinal sin, Damon Bailey. Don't ever turn your head away from the ball, offense or defense. That time he got hit right in the back of the head. That happens one or two more times. You just stop throwing it to the guy. He doesn't want it. Cheney. Good box up by Lee. But he shoved Nover to the baseline. Bobby Knight thought it was too much of a shove, and he wanted the foul call. Olsen, a long three. Tracked down by Rowe in the corner. Now Lee. He comes from a basketball family. His brother Greg played at Southern Illinois in Edwardsville. Another brother Phil played at Northern Illinois. Curtis is at Eastern Illinois. Now if they can just get a brother at Western Illinois, they'd have the whole state covered. Good, ex good execution that time by Lieb of the jump hook that we talked about him needing to do rather than jump shot. Off the steal, the Panthers into the front court. Martin gave it to Rowe. Now Johnson. An air ball as he tried to shoot over Calvert Cheney. Both teams doing an excellent job of box boxing out. Very few offensive rebounds in the second half. Reynolds for two. He was on the line. That's eight possessions and just two baskets lately for Indiana. But when you're shooting 63% like Indiana is, there's very few offensive rebounding opportunities. Olsen missed the three, Nover the board. Henderson continues to have a big night. 16 points for the freshman. Iowa. In that nip and tuck battle with Texas, leading by four with under a minute to play. Rowe spinning down the lane, and he was fouled by Allen Henderson. It'll be a two shot foul. Tomorrow in the East Regional at Worcester, the Centrum, Syracuse and Princeton. UMass and Fordham, UNC, Charlotte, and Iowa State, and Kentucky and Old Dominion. A lot of people looking forward to that Syracuse 
Princeton matchup. UMass, folks around the country whined a little bit when they got a number three seed, but I live in Massachusetts, saw John Calipari's club play a lot this year. They are for real. They had a terrific year in the power race prior to their Atlantic 10 Conference Championship win over West Virginia. They were the fifth ranked team in the country, and the tournament selection committee uses that RPI index. I don't know if they're that good, but they are worthy of a three seed. Rose free throw narrows the gap to 62-36. Got them the Pac-10 championship and the number one seed. They've got a chance to wipe out last year's embarrassing loss in the first round of the tournament to Penn State. The Bruins open with Robert Morris. Eric Anderson. Short. Long rebound bounced out to Curtis Lee. 62-36 Indiana. They jumped off to a 10-0 lead in this one. Then they have not looked back. Martin on the floor with Rowe. Olsen. Lieb and Rodriguez for the Panthers and there's another turnover number 13 for EIU again an opening for Eastern Illinois but the rotating defense by Indiana is so good that'll be a big factor tomorrow night against O'Neill and the LSU Tigers Albert Cheney went to the floor hard right on his back but he's up and running into your picture now Rodriguez. Now Martin the bounce pass in traffic. Olsen had it stuffed by Allen Henderson. Jamal Meeks. Henderson has shown excellent range on that jumper. As soon as we say it, he's long from about 15 feet. The last sequence defensively for Indiana. Allen Henderson, we've seen shot blocking galore today in Boise that time. Henderson with a great block and recovering it himself, starting his own fast break. Anderson, guilty of the foul as he leaned on Curtis Lee. First foul on Eric Anderson. He was Mr. Basketball in the state of Illinois in 1988. Speaking of Illinois, Eastern Illinois, one of two schools from the state of Illinois in the tournament, DePaul being the other. And Rick Samuels says his program has never received as much attention as it has in the last week because they're sharing the spotlight only with DePaul in their home state. He thinks it should help them in recruiting. He said up until now, Rose stepped on the baseline. Up until now, he said a lot of coaches, high school coaches in Illinois, think that Eastern Illinois is still the Division II program, even though they've been Division I for 11 years. A program like Eastern Illinois, they'll work incredibly hard to get a player, and it's so frustrating for them because they spend guys' time right at the start working on the players, and then at the last, a team like Indiana or Illinois, one of the powerhouse teams in the Midwest, will make one phone call, and they'll sign up the prospect that way. Rick Samuels does most of his recruiting within a 200 mile radius of the campus which is in Charleston Illinois by the way a rural community of about 20,000 it's 180 miles south of Chicago 130 miles east of St. Louis and that's Calvert Cheney for three seven points for Cheney the junior from Evansville Indiana he's only taken four shots tonight he's three of four from the floor Whistled away from the ball. Eric Anderson called for a hold. We talked about Cheney and his lack of offensive production. One of the signs of a really great player is that he does it when you really need it. In a game like this, when it's when the score is doubled, he can sit back and let the other guys like Henderson develop his game a little bit. Damon Bailey returns, replacing Allen Henderson, who leaves with 16 points and eight rebounds. Two block shots as well for Henderson. Rowe. The follow dropped in by Rodriguez. 65-38 Indiana with 12-20 to play in the second half here in Boise. Meeks to Graham. They comprise the Hoosier backcourt. This is Bailey. Nice shot with Olsen in his face. 
16 for Bailey. Big question here for Indiana. How long do you keep your guys in? I think Bob Knight may leave them in a little extra tonight to try to continue this hot shooting, give them some confidence and practice shooting well before the next game on Saturday. Martin scores, and he was fouled by Cheney. Three fouls on Cheney. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, Coach Knight doesn't have a lot of alternatives with only 10 players in uniform. But you're right, we could see a bit more of Lindemann and Leary down the stretch, and we probably will. Here's Martin. Coach Samuel says, Sung hero this year. 67 41 Indiana, back in a moment. Rent from Hertz in California, and you have a whole company behind you doing whatever it takes to. Greg Graham knocked down Kevin Martin. Moments ago, we talked about the cancellation of the Indiana Awards banquet. Here's what Coach Knight had to say about it yesterday. Taking away a banquet, this particular banquet, uh, if I were going to use that as a tool with my players, I would have added a banquet or two rather than taking one away. I mean, my players are so happy they don't have this banquet. Uh, the coaches are happy. The banquet is, has become a passe thing. And the foul called is rolling up. He was hit by Jamal Meeks. Your thoughts, Bill? A convenient explanation. The tickets were sold. It was announced on the schedule. Banquets are for the fans. They're not for the players or the coaches. They're for the fans to come and have a good time and meet the players and the coach, talk about basketball, how the season went. I think they should have went ahead with the banquet. It was on the schedule. If they don't like it, don't schedule it next year. I agree with you. The banquet is close enough now that it is a major nuisance for those involved and a major disappointment for those planning to attend. Coach Knight said yesterday he has been talking to his secretary for eight years about canceling the banquet. But if he wanted to do it this year, he could have done it long ago. And as you said, the timing was a bit coincidental coming as it did right after the disappointing loss to Purdue. However, I think most players would agree with what he said. They generally don't enjoy those awards banquets, the lengthy speeches and such. When I was in college with John Wooden, we didn't have a single banquet because of a very unfortunate situation before I got there where a player had got up and bad the whole situation. <laughs> John Wooden said, enough. We're not coming back here anymore. That's a good way to bring about an end to the banquet. Henderson called for a charge. That's one of the few things he's done wrong tonight. Three fouls on Henderson. This will be the 11th at the rate it's going. Win of 30 points or more for Indiana this year. Martin. Jump ball call. Both Henderson and Bailey had a hand on the ball. They finished playing tonight at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, USC. The last of the four victorious teams there and some attractive matchups Saturday at the Bradley Center. I think USC is a team that can go all the way. They'll have to eventually get through Arkansas if Arkansas continues to play well. Harold Miner is a type of player that can carry a team all the way through this tournament. That's a three for Greg Graham. He has 12. 76-42, Indiana with 9.20 to play. This is the largest lead for the Hoosiers. Meeks with the steal as he took it away from Steve Rowe. That's been a problem for Eastern Illinois. When Kevin Martin goes out of the game, they really don't have a short-handed ball handler at the point, although Rowe has improved in that area. Bailey dumped it off to Nover. The shot deflected by Lee. Eric West gave it up to Lewis Jordan, a chance for Rick Samuel to play some of his bench people and his team hopelessly behind. Makes the look of the pass. No basket traveling the ball. One of the most interesting scores of the day in the southeast region at Cincinnati, Connecticut. What a schizophrenic team Jim Calhoun has. A 21-point win over a higher-seeded team in Nebraska. A lot of people thought that would be a very competitive 
eight nine game balanced scoring tonight for the Huskies Chris Smith 24 Scott Burrell 20 and Danielle Marshall the freshman at 19. Connecticut will go now against Ohio State a big winner today Big East versus Big Ten great matchup. Indiana continues to score at will. Connecticut if they can get back on track and perhaps they are with that win over Nebraska a dangerous tournament team they're deep and talented they play a pressing style that in the tournament can cause some problems with the limited time leave whistled for the foul as he collided with Allen Henderson one thing that one thing that makes the Big East team so tough is that the top to bottom level of, of performance and competition in that league is so tough that when they get into a tournament they're used to playing against good teams each and every day but Jimmy Jackson is an all-American basketball player who can take his team like Harold Miner can take his all the way to the top Derek Landris number 22 in for the first time for the Panthers he's a freshman from Charleston Illinois which is the home of Eastern Illinois University. Been a good day for the Big East. Seton Hall, Georgetown, and Connecticut. All victorious in the first round. One. Seton Hall to Missouri. Peeler, DeHare, great matchup on Saturday. Eric Anderson returns, and Henderson goes out. 17 points and 10 rebounds. One of the best efforts of his career. Jordan guarded by Reynolds. Rodriguez didn't get at the ball. West scores. Despite what has happened here tonight for Eastern Illinois, it's really been a great week or so for the players with the win last week in Cleveland in the Mid-Continent Conference Tournament. They bust back eight hours from Cleveland, arrived at their gym, 1,500 people there to welcome them back. A pep rally. Shot knocked down by Lewis Jordan. These last... 10 or 11 days for Eastern Illinois. This will be something they'll be talking about the rest of their lives when they're sitting on the porch watching the sun go down in the Midwest someday. And they'll say, hey, remember back in 1992 when we made it to the NCAA tournament. West heads out. As does Anderson for Indiana. Troy Collier, number 10, who's in for the first time tonight for Eastern Illinois. Collier, the sophomore from Danville, Illinois. Rodriguez shoots over Lindemann. Rebounded by Nover. Lindemann back to Meeks. Leary, nice shot. The sophomore from Indianapolis pushes the lead to 37, matching the largest Indiana lead. And now all 10 Indiana players have scored tonight. It'll be Indiana ball out of bounds. And to those of you just joining us, welcome to first round action in the West region. Indiana taking on Eastern Illinois, the Hoosiers in white. I'm Sean McDonough with Bill Walton. Indiana jumped off to a 10-0 lead. And their largest lead is their current lead, 37 points. The winner of this one, it will be Indiana, will take on LSU on Saturday. And in the other action here in Boise on Saturday, Georgetown. We'll meet up with Florida State. Those are the matchups we anticipated, and those are two marquee matchups to be sure. The Indiana LSU matchup as we get a good look at Bob Knight berating the officials with a huge lead. <laughs> Don't really understand that. But that matchup, those two teams have met twice before, both in tournament action. Indiana's won both of them, and both times they've gone on to win the championship. Chris Reynolds just fouled out with four points. 
Of course, one of the most vivid images of the NCAA tournament in recent years during the Indiana LSU game in the tournament a couple of years ago, Bobby Knight pounding the phone at the scorer's table in front of Gene Corrigan. We'll have to get to the bottom of the true story about whether he and Dale Brown have really patched things up or if there's still some problems in the relationship. So different stories depending upon whom you speak with. I know you talked with Dale Brown on the flight out here the other day. Dale Brown feels that he has buried that hatchet with Bob Knight. He called Bob Knight after he re read a very interesting story in the newspaper. A person in Baton Rouge had been killed in an act of mindless juvenile delinquency in Baton Rouge. The father of the victim said, I think these young men are generally nice people. I have to put this aside. When Dale Brown heard that story, that act of compassion by that father, he called Bob Knight on the phone. They've been good friends ever since. Todd Lindemann gets it to drop in. Now we just have to hear Bob Knight's side of that. Story. I was going to say, I'd be anxious to hear if he has the same account of it. Maybe Bob Knight just doesn't accept collect phone calls, and that's why he pounded that phone. <laughs> Eric Landris guarded by Leary. Now Jordan couldn't drive on Anderson. Troy Collier off the mark, rebounded by Lindemann. You can see steady improvement in Todd Lindemann as the season has gone along. Aaron pass. There he was trying to find Anderson. It was nowhere near him. 5.03 to play. Indiana has never trailed. Allen Henderson leading the way. The freshman with 17 points and 10 boards. And Indiana really hasn't let up. They shot 68% in the first half. Now it's 66% for the game. Been speaking about Todd Lindemann, just a young player getting a lot of experience in this game. I think he'll be needed for brief moments against O'Neill and the LSU Tigers on Saturday afternoon. Come in, give a few fouls, play some tough defense. Not a lot, but could be a factor. Leary ran into Lindemann. And now Meeks. Anderson it wouldn't fall following the rebound action one of the interesting things we learned about Eastern Illinois as we prepared for the game they have a couple of great names among the alumni of their school Kevin Seitzer major league baseball player the late folk singer Burl Ives played football at Eastern Illinois on the Panthers' last unbeaten football team back in 1928. And the actor John Malkovich is also an Eastern Illinois graduate. Nover missed the short one. Lindemann got a hand on it to keep it alive for Anderson. And he powers down the lane for two. He's had a super night off the bench. 11 points and five rebounds for Anderson. So you win by 41 in the NCAA tournament. You're all psyched up, and then you wake up the next morning and say, oh, O'Neal and the LSU Tigers are on the horizon. Great. Jordan's shot was deflected and fell into the arms of Anderson. 3.40 to play. Indiana leads 87-46, 41 points, the largest Hoosier lead. Lindemann shot off the backboard, off the rim, and into the hands of Landers. He pulls up for three. Derek Landris hasn't played very much this year. But he's in the scoring column for the first time tonight. Very shut off by Landris. The man with the ball, Jamal Meeks, right now. This is a real good story. This is a player who's a senior going to be graduating. That's a three for Todd Leary. But Meeks has been relegated to the bench with the development 
of Greg Graham, a more talented, phys and physically talented player than Jamal Meeks. He's accepted that demotion beautifully. Now he's out here mopping up. Could be an embarrassing situation for him, but he's making the most of it, encouraging the younger players, trying to teach them how to play good basketball. Nice to see that kind of maturity. Meeks has been a great floor leader for Indiana. Two and a half minutes to play. Leary a little bit short. He got it back. Tried to feed Lindemann. Landris got a hand on it. And here comes Lewis Jordan. How do you size up the other matchup here in Boise on Saturday? Georgetown and Florida State. There's three more for Landris. A real key there has got to be the health of Charlie Ward, who went out with a shoulder separation, dislocation today. X-rays will be taken tomorrow. His status will be very important. The big men for Georgetown, of course, Alonzo Mourning. He will be very dominant throughout. For Florida State, they don't play with big guys with the exception of the backup role of Andre Reed. I think Reed will have to come in to try to contain Mourning. The speed and quickness for Florida State up and down. Georgetown physically will be able to match up. Whether they'll be able to shoot the ball as well today, uh, Saturday as they did today against a slower... Two men. South Florida team. Question. Anderson at the line. I think the most impressive thing here today, beyond some of the great individual performances that we've seen, is that all four teams that won here today played exceptionally well. Florida State struggled a bit when Ward went out, but other than that, all four winners played well. Customers demand. High quality and low. And Craig, you get to the honor of facing this Indiana team on Saturday. What do you think? Well, it'll be interesting. You know, we'll go back now. We'll start preparation, and that's why we play the schedule we played. We've played nine of the top 13 teams, nine games against the top 13 teams in the country this year. So we'll prepare for this game to like those. What have you seen so far tonight that would concern you? Uh, have you been able to tell much against Eastern Illinois? I think that you understand the style and system of Indiana and their program, and I think you understand coming in here uh, what that's going to be. So the things that you look for, are they, are they online where they want to be, and they are, and they're playing very well. Now, the last time Dale Brown and Bob Knight met in a tournament game, the infamous afternoon in Cincinnati in 1987, everybody seems to have an opinion on what's going to happen when they meet on Saturday. Do you expect any fireworks? Well, I think it's two tremendous basketball programs, and I think that's noted by the banners hanging in both arenas. And Coach Knight and Coach Brown, both are very competitive individuals, and I think they've worked their differences out there, and there were some misunderstandings, and I think they both have tremendous respect for each other. A very diplomatic response. Thanks very much, Craig. All right, back to Sean and Bill. There goes Andrea <laughs> late at night trying to stir up a little trouble in the final minute of four games. Indiana leads 94-52. Landris, he feels it. That's three three-pointers for Derek Landris. Over. Stepped on the baseline. He was shut off by Kevin Robertson, number 50. So now all of the Panthers have played as well. Final 10 seconds of a rousing Indiana win. And a fitting ending as Henderson blocks the shot of Jordan. Allen stepped out of bounds with 2.8 remaining. The Chevrolet players of the game, Steve Rowe of Eastern Illinois, 10 points and three assists, and Alan Henderson, 19 points, 10 rebounds, three block shots, and three steals. Jordan launches one, and that's it. The final score, Indiana 94 and Eastern Illinois 55. Saturday here in Boise. Georgetown will meet Florida State, and Indiana takes on LSU.
for Bill Walton and Andrea Joyce. Sean McDonough saying so long from Boise, Idaho. Let's send you back to the studio now in Jim Nance. All right, Sean, good night to you. So March Madness on opening day, really, Billy, was completely sane. It was.